This is All Things Fitness and Wellness, uniting industry thought leaders and fitfluencers on the mission to inspire innovation and encourage people to live a life fit and well. Brought to you by British Columbia Personal Training Institute. Learn how to train, gain, and retain clients. Visit bcpti.ca. On today's episode, we have Daniela Dib from Dib Fit Cycle in Vancouver. Daniela has an epic story of constant pivots as a professional dancer, being featured in music videos across the globe and movies, and then ultimately transitioning to a spin bike, making waves in the industry. She's a true story of perseverance and a lot of soul. Before we get to it, make sure that you hit like and subscribe so you never miss a new release that drop every Monday and Wednesday. This is ATFW. I am beyond excited today because I have Daniela Dib joining me. And Daniela, the funny part is, is last time I saw you, I was giving you a hug where I was magenta and looked like I had severely peed my pants. <laughs> Means you worked way. hard. Means you worked hard. I love it. Yes, you just opened Dib Fit Cycle. Massive congratulations to you. Thank you so much. It's been a big passion project, and it's so cool that it's finally come to life. It's a huge passion project, but I think you're somebody that just exudes passion as a being, and that's what we're going to dive into today, because your story is really one about reinvention, perseverance, discipline, positivity, and as well, you have this innerness, I almost like to call it, that I can tell you want to motivate and inspire people genuinely. And I want to tap into all of that. So I'm going to reverse to the early days of your life here. I understand your first intro into fitness was through gymnastics. So it was I first started as a gymnast and I wasn't very good. I think we should just put that out on the table. I was not very good. But what I was good at was the performing and dance aspect of it on the floor um, during the floor routine. So I think that after a couple of years, my coaches said, Daniela might be better suited to dancing as opposed to add the actual um, gymnastic side of it. So I switched into ballet. That was much more suited for me. And after a couple of years of training, um, I started attending Canada's National Ballet School when I was 11. So I was their full-time program. I moved to Toronto. I had been living in Vancouver, got the opportunity to move and went to boarding school, spent most of my high school years there away from my family, but also so uh, fulfilled and excited. But what I was doing, I never was homesick or anything like that. I was grateful to see them over the holidays. And um, dance was really the first introduction I had into fitness, athleticism, and how amazing it is to move your body. That was really the thing that sparked with me, and that has never died for me. Well, it really is something when you discover what it is for you and the gift of movement that I think we want to incorporate everlastingly in our life, even when sometimes our motivation ebbs and flows. So I'm curious, why ballet? Because at that point in your life, you would have had endless options. Um, I think that, well, my mom just put me in ballet, and it happened to be something that I realized I loved very quickly. Like, I was so excited to go. I could not wait. I loved everything about it. And when the opportunity came up to audition for the National Ballet School, I jumped at it. And I, you have to spend the summer there before they accept you into the full-time program. And I knew I would have been devastated if I didn't get in. And I was very young, but I also was very determined. So it was a great look at what it feels like to work really hard for something, to achieve it. But on the flip side of that, after um, several years of attending, I actually was not reaccepted into the program for my final two years. And so that was a huge lesson in pulling yourself up when things don't go your way. So it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies and I was, you know, prima donna and whatnot. It was a lot of rejection um, and a lot of needing to dig kind of below that superficial layer of like, that would be nice to have. It's like, how bad do you want something? So I did continue to dance and um, that dance journey just transitioned me into full-time fitness. Do you recall any of those moments of early rejection? Because Absolutely. like what, it, talk me through that experience, especially when you're a young mind and don't necessarily have all the emotional intelligence yet to take that on. Absolutely. I would have been 16, I think. And my my mom called me and she was crying because she knew the news she was about to give me. And this was pre-cell phones. Not to age myself. <laughs> Don't worry, I was in the same <laughs> boat. <laughs> I mean, pre-cell phones, 
because I'm 18. Um, <laughs> she called me on, they had these like two pay phones and you would, so she would sometimes call me for 45 minutes or it was two lines for the entire school. And sometimes she would call me for like 45 minutes and would say, ring like the dial tone. She'd finally get through to me and I'd answer and be like, mom, I'm watching Gilmore Girls. And she's like, Daniela, talk to me. I'm your mother. I tried to do for 45 minutes. But in this particular case, when I picked up the phone, I did not say I would like to watch Gilmore Girls. I could tell she was very upset. And she said, um, Danielle, I got a call. It looks like they will not be reaccepting you into the program for um, the next year. And I'm, you know, I'm so sorry, but you have your final evaluation on Saturday. And I just, I hope you can just do the best you can and see if maybe they'll change their mind. And I was I hung up the phone and burst into tears and I was like, I'm going to show them on Saturday. Like I'm going to go in there and like dance my heart out on the stage. So it was very official. They had you on a stage and you were basically doing a class and they had Karen Kane, who was, I mean, legendary. Yes. uh, James Kadelka and, um, the whole staff, Mavis Staines of the National Ballet School watching. And I remember just going out there ready to be my most beautiful, amazing self and danced my heart out and walked off the stage. And I was like, if that didn't convince them, nothing will. Well, that did not convince them. <laughs> and they they unaccepted me from the program. It, it has nothing to do with you. It's unfortunately, it's a very um, competitive industry. There's space for maybe 11 to 15 students per class. And the older you get, the tougher it is to stay in. So it was heartbreaking. Like it was heartbreaking. I chopped off all my hair. That was like my. That's like a go-to. That move, was my I go-to find. move. I chopped off all my hair. I dyed it red. I used to mohawk it. I started showing up for class late. I just was like really like very sad about yeah. uh, about it. Um, but I picked myself back up came home, started dancing at Pacific Dance Arts, and then I started auditioning for um, ballet summer schools. I got into Boston Ballet, Houston Ballet, then I did the um, program with American Ballet Theater before joining Texas Ballet Theater and their studio company. So I still had um, lots to offer, but uh, it was it was a great lesson. I think it's so important to touch on those moments as well, especially when we look at someone like yourself and you have an amazing social media presence. So there's a lot of people I feel invested in your journey in this great, beautiful way. But they see the success story at this point, And it's so important to acknowledge those moments where things don't go our way and the messiness of that. Oh, so messy. And the importance of it being that messy. You have to let those emotions move through. But then you're left with the choice. Do I let this be my reason for failure, or really my excuse for failure, or the reason to succeed? Totally. And I love that you chose it as the reason. So you're picking up, you're dancing, you're auditioning. Where does this journey take you now? So very um, fun little chapter of my life. I actually um, I landed a part in Center Stage 2. So Center Stage 1, very iconic. Center Stage 2, it was a small part, but it was still like a little speaking role. My character's name was Alice and um, I, or Allison, one of the two, I think Allison. And I was in front of the camera dancing and I was like, oh, I like this. I like being in front of the camera. So that shifted my direction out of um, wanting to be in a ballet company into wanting to dance on film. And there's a huge, vibrant film community in Vancouver. So I got a dance agent here and I was able to book lots of uh, dance jobs and music videos. So I did music videos with Michael Bublé. I was on a show called Hellcats, um, Sucker Punch, did some dancing in like Smallville, Supernatural, oh, all the local life, stuff, like, right? The music videos too, when you think about it. Like, yeah. Think how iconic they were they, of uh, our years of growing up. Absolutely, especially because there was no TikTok and there was no Instagram. So it was, oh my God, we're aging ourselves. <laughs> TikTok so, and Instagram were there. It's just, okay yeah. to age ourselves. I always have a theory. I'm like, you know what? I'll tell you, I'm 35, and I'm like, it's okay that time passes because it's time well spent and invested. Time is well spent, <laughs> and we're just getting cuter. We're just getting exactly. cuter. Exactly. Thank you, Botox. Yes. Uh, my part, anyways. <laughs> but um, the the industry was um, something I just loved being in. I realized I loved being in front of the camera. And then myself and two other girls got together, and we formed a uh, girl group. And Tell me there's footage of this somewhere. There is some footage of it. I will have to send to you. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of it was taken down. But um, 
we started a group called Vanity. There were three of us, and it was it was a time in my life. Let me tell you, it was so much fun. And we actually got a music deal with Universal Records. And so we moved to Toronto. And unfortunately, we made some very bad decisions. And we listened to very poor advice by people who I think had, uh, I was 21. I were very easily manipulated. And um, yeah, the poor advice, unfortunately, led to our group um, falling apart completely. And I Again, I thought I was going to be in this, like, next girlicious, like, we had everything it, it's going to take. Like, this is our moment. And it it didn't work out at all. It was actually a huge failure. And I had to pick up my stuff from Toronto. I was super depressed and moved back to Vancouver. And I was like, all right, I've got to figure out what I want to do next. And I decided to apply for my O-1 visa so I could go to the States. I'd always wanted to live in New York. I had a little stint there when I um, trained with ABT. And I got my work visa and I was able to move to the States to dance. And I did that professionally for three years before uh, Soul Cycle came into my life. And that was a game changer for me. Now, I'm curious, Soul Cycle, was this something that you had on your radar or how did this relationship bridge build? Because you're a woman out in the world now with many, many talents. Well, Soul Cycle had a was very, very smart and they would go through dance and modeling agencies kind of scouting talent and they would invite you to the class. And my agent said, are you interested in attending a Soul Cycle class? And I said, what's that? And she's like, it's a cardio class on a bike. I said, no, thank you. And she said, just so you know, if you get the job, you get a 401 and uh, health benefits. And I was like, what time is that class tomorrow? <laughs> like, I will be there I, was, now. I will be there. Like, I was, I'd been three years, you know, it's like you're living job to job. Like, some months you're booking, like, I, you know, I just booked a Megan Trainer music video that blew up. Like, these things are happening. And then other months, it's like, you haven't booked a job in two months. And you're like, and rent is due. And I'm, you know, I think I was 24 at the time. So. Like, I like eating, all those I, things. <laughs> I love eating. There it is. Love eating. Um, So I made. The decision to go to the class. Why the initial no? Uh, because for me, just the thought of cardio, like, no, no, thank you. I don't run. I wasn't, I was yoga and Pilates certified. And I, of course, taught dance, which is amazing. And all those skill sets are like incredible, but nothing to do with um intense cardio based workouts were absolutely not something I was interested in. Oh, I love yeah. I love knowing yes. this background yes. or knowing where you went. I was so. a solid no for me, like a hard no. Went in. The second I finished that class, I was like, that was transformative. I just, I felt like I had partied on a bike. I didn't really know what was happening. I didn't even know how to clip in my shoes. And I didn't know how everyone was going so fast. I'm like, how do they all know what they're doing? I've missed out on some, but I was very excited about the opportunity or perspective of getting to teach. So they put me through a expedited training process in LA and I was so overwhelmed and I remember just crying making my playlist because I was really struggling with how do I teach and motivate and coach and get through this insane workout because it's actually also an insane workout which sometimes we forget because we're having so much fun and I went up and I did my community rides which is when you basically like present yourself to the um soul cycle community and they gave me seven chances and I failed every class they just kept saying nope 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 and by like the seventh one they're like it's just a no like you're not you can't work here and that was the most devastating no I've ever gotten it was like I was so crushed that that didn't work out and I remember moving back to Vancouver and um I, it's some great things happened here. I had a little stint on the X-Files and I was like, you know, maybe I should just stay here and get more into like acting. But there was just always this pull for me. I was like, oh, I just, and I got a call. It was maybe three months later and they said, hey, a spot in our New York training program has opened up, but you have to go through training all over again. And you have to pay to get yourself here and you have to pay your way through it. And I was like, cool. I have no money. And uh, a lot of I, on here. Yeah, like, and um, I have to renew my visa and because the three years had just come up and I made the decision to do it. So I got a new agent in New York and I, 
started, I was living with my friend and her um, now husband. They were very kind to let me do that. I slept on their futon. And then I was also working on a show called The Best Time Ever with Neil Patrick Harris. And that was amazing because it kind of kept me afloat. But I was doing that on, I was rehearsing on Fridays, Saturdays, or sorry, Saturday, Sunday, we filmed on Mondays and I was in training all the other days. So it was like seven days a week for months and what's the that. training like in that experience it's very intense like talk me through you, an average yeah they would have you, you riding at least two to three classes a day and then during the day you were doing like training with them so that's on um everything from of course the basics of just your body like what does it mean to move on a bike what muscles are we doing so like just the basics of anatomy and then playlist making i i can't stress what a critical part music plays in a class that's rhythm based and also you want to touch all genres while staying true to yourself bpms like there's just so much to like kind of feel like you're learning how to dj and then the rest of it was spent on becoming really strong like it was a, a opportunity to become you know physically and mentally very strong so and I also failed the first round, so I was extra determined. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback I got was, oh, she's not very fast on the bike. Like, I really lacked speed. Anyone that's taken my class now knows. I, lack, I find that shocking. I lack no speed <laughs> now. why I left magenta, yeah. Yeah. and I was not catching up. Yeah, <laughs> but it took a lot. It, it's not easy. It's not easy. And then those rounds of community rides, I I felt very different. And it was very um, empowering to see how far I had come because it had been almost a year since the first round in L.A. to finishing that and being like, oh, that was really great. So taught in L.A. Then I they moved me to, um, to Los Angeles to teach there, taught in L.A. and Newport with the knowledge that I would be returning back to Vancouver and actually opening the Soul Cycle here. What an amazing full circle journey yeah. to to go from the no to here are the yeah. keys to the castle yes. kind of thing. It was really cool. Turn your passion for fitness into a career with British Columbia Personal Training Institute. Taught by personal trainers, BCPTI combines classroom and in-gym training to give you the tools needed to succeed in the fitness industry and make an impact. With a simple formula focused on service, science, and sales, prospective personal trainers learn how to gain, train, and retain clients. Visit BCPTI pti.ca for more information like how did you find out that they were going to be opening in vancouver they made an announcement that they were opening in canada and then they had a conversation with me about vancouver and by then i had started redating my then on and off boyfriend um but we and now he's my husband um and it was so exciting to get to tell him that I was going to be moving back. We made the decision to make long distance work. And we are obviously so glad we did because everything's worked out there. And it was just, a, again, when you say full circle, such a full circle moment. Like this was also the guy that I kind of kept leaving. And I was like, oh, uh, this girl group is going to work out. Oh, this dance. Like, and I just kept. And then it was like, finally, after like seven years of that back and forth, we united in a way that was w when it was meant to be. Oh, and you have all this experience behind you now as well. I find it fascinating as you tell your story about working through the rejections and every single time letting yourself never get to the mindset that's like, well, wh why me? And just forget it. Because that is what happens sometimes. We get those roadblocks and you've seen them every single time as an opportunity. And on that note... You do Soul Cycle, which yes. I have to say, I was sharing this in the parking lot before Daniela joined us here today. So obvious that you were meant to be a motivator. I actually went to the Yelltown studio at the time, and it was around the new year. And I had a friend that had come out super last minute to visit me that was basically like, My life's imploding. I don't know who I am anymore, or literally the words. And I said, Just get yourself here. Like, of course, come. And I took her to your class. And I remember she was crying during the class from things that you shared and it hit her so deeply in her soul on that bike. And there's such a power in that to be able to do that for another human being. And I imagine, cause I mean, you've spoke to the physicality of the experience and the playlist, but tell me at that point what you're getting from putting that into people. Well, the wonderful thing about teaching a class the way that I do and with that many humans in the room is that, and especially I find, um, I 
I really do feel like my riders are always very hype. And we have a thing about hype up your neighbor and, you know, cheers your neighbor. And just like I even get people to like hit their neighbor's handlebars. So it's it's not just me. It feels like an us thing. And it's kind of like having a conversation where it's not one sided. You're putting something out there, but you are getting it back. And then the more you get back, the more you can you have to say. And speaking about the motivation side, I always say, of course, course it's about the workout yes but I will never discuss things like calories or I'll never say things like you know like you've got to earn your weekend or like anything in the realm of um physical of course physical changes will naturally happen especially if you come all the time it's it's a given but it, it is not the primary motivator of what I do the primary motivator of what I do and what I want to bring to my room is making you feel empowered, making you feel seen, and making you not just feel like, no, that you're deserving of amazing things happening to you. You're deserving of of the incredible opportunities that are coming your way. And if you are in a hard time of your life, that you are going, it's, it's reminding you that you are going to get through it. You have the power to get through it. You're going to see it through. You're not going to um, ever be in a state where someone doesn't have your back. And that's what's cool about the neighbor stuff too. It reminds you that you're never alone. The language around that's so important because I agree for the same way. And this is really the point of all things fitness and wellness as well is that Especially now, we have mental health crisis on our hand in many capacities and fitness for myself. I happen to really love a gym space and lifting weights, but as well, popping into different group classes. And it's the the mental gift that it gives you a mental stamina. And I love people like yourself sharing their stories because it's the reminder to people that the voice that's up on the stand has also walked through strife and struggle, but use this as the tool to persevere. So on the note of strife and struggle... You get hit with a pandemic. Yes. What does that mean for your relationship with Soul Cycle at that point? Well, for all fitness instructors, I think we um, we are an industry that was just is you're caught off guard. I remember them saying like, "Oh, it's just two weeks," and I was like, "Oh, I guess it'll be okay for my body for two weeks." Um, but I actually um, I have a hard time sitting still. So we got the shutdown on the Sunday. And by Tuesday, I started leading online classes um, pretty much right away um, on my Instagram. I just would film myself every day at noon and doing a workout. And it grew really quickly. People started, like, tuning in with me and, like, it went from like 10 to like 50 to a few hundred people were consistently. And then by the end, because it would stay up for 24 hours, by the end of the day, I would sometimes have a thousand people who have done that workout within that day. Amazing. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'd never considered what I do to be something that would translate online. I actually remember kind of like being like, maybe I should start a YouTube channel like back in the day. And it just didn't do it for me. I love being in person. But when that was cut away from you, one, financially, I had to do something because my job was at a fitness studio that was no longer there. But two, I I needed to do something. Like I woke up every day with a genuine purpose of I'm teaching at 12 o'clock today. So that helped get me through that big three month stretch of the pandemic. I also did order a Peloton because I was like, I can't not ride a bike. And as that was like progressing and moving along, we had no idea what was going to happen with Seoul. They opened up for like the tiniest bit in 2020, then they closed the doors and they just never reopened. But there was always talk of them coming back, coming back, coming back. They kept saying like even on the website, it was like Yale Town coming back in 2022. So they sort of kept us all like on our tippity toes like are they coming are they coming back but I'm then, sure the thought leaders at the same time too were like yeah, I hope so yeah like, it was such an unknown time it was very unknown and I by then had started really diving into dip fit but it was all online and it was all workouts that were done at home so using lightweights um and just general things like a 
resistance band and ankle weights. I was like creating workouts, a lot of ab workouts, um, arm workouts, whatnot, because people didn't have all the equipment, especially right at the beginning. Getting oh, you weights was get like <laughs> getting weights was like winning the lottery at that point. I'm like, how does someone have like 10 pound weights? Like, what did they do for those? It reminds like, me of like tomato cans. Yes, like, yes. I was, u- I was using tomato <laughs> cans. I'm like, all right, let's move this one pound behind us. Like, it's just, we did what we could with what we had at the time. And when SoulCycle announced that they were closing, it was just this year. The second we got off that Zoom call, it was just like a Zoom call. I got off and I was like, I'm going to open my own. And I just Amazing. made the decision on the spot. I had no investor, no business plan, never opened a business, no knowledge of how to do it. But I was like, I'm going to do it. Um, I tried to get the old soul cycle space. I tried really hard. It didn't work out. Um, and again, these are things that can often be blessings and disguises. And I'm very grateful that they picked who they did. And, and I just said to myself, okay, that's not the space for me. I had no idea how challenging it was to get a space in Vancouver. To me, I walk around, I see, oh, that's empty, that's empty, that's empty. I had no no concept of how challenging it was. So much of the issue is zoning, as you know. So zoning, so if you have 100 spaces, most of them are not zoned for fitness. So take 100 you've suddenly narrowed down to two. And then you're not just the only person looking at that space. Every other interested party is also looking at that space. And they're like, well, this girl has no experience never owned a gym never you know and it's just me showing up and I'm like hey <laughs> give me a space yeah. I'm awesome I go fast on a bike um and convincing of that and convincing myself that I could do it so it took so many uh, learning curves so many steps and I still face learning curves all the time but I do believe somehow all the right people have come in to my inner circle and helped create the most amazing studio that I I could ever dream of. My manager, Alyssa, she's a godsend. Like, I'm so grateful for her. All of the instructors are absolutely phenomenal. And they're all different and they bring something so beautiful and unique. And I truly believe there's a class for everyone with our instructors. I'm so grateful that the space turned out. I think it's absolutely stunning. And we put a lot of work into creating that space and we got it up and running only one week late. We opened our doors only one week late, which is... Anyone that's opened a business knows yes. that's highly impressive. Yes, like the fact that we even opened in September and we got possession July 1st. Like there was a lot of things that fell into place. To be honest, the hardest part was getting the lease and convincing uh people that I was able to make this happen, including myself. I had many moments of like, am I crazy for doing this? I still have those moments. <laughs> in general. That's when you know you're yeah. really living. Yes. If you don't have to ask yourself that yes. question, then I'm you're like, probably in the comfort zone a little yes, too much. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable at all right now. So doing the right thing there. And I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful that the space has turned out how it has. Tell me how you felt the day that you found out that space was yours. Oh, by then, I mean, it had been two months of back and forth between all the parties interested and you know rent's getting increased and this and like they're throwing this at at you and someone else was interested in the sound they weren't convinced I could soundproof it and there was just so many hurdles and obstacles and by then that like similar fire that I get was in me to the point where I was like if I didn't actually want to do this I would have bowed out by now but I knew every day I woke up with like that intention. I'm like, all right, put together the business plan, find people for your team. Like, let's make this happen. Retail needs to be done. Just all these things I'd never done. Up until that point, I was an instructor and I loved being an instructor. And I, my focus was building my classes, building my playlist and building my, you know, mental, physical well-being so that I could perform beautifully in front of people because it kind of is a performance or it's a you're giving a lot of yourself absolutely and then this was all of a sudden learn how to do all the other sides of it so the learning curve was steep and it had to be achieved quickly but sometimes that's the best way to do it throw yourself in right 
Throw Absolutely. yourself in. You'll figure it out on the way down. <laughs> Just ride real fast. Yes, ride real fast, bits. real fast. <laughs> well, Dip Bit Cycle is incredible. I walked into the space quite recently, and the thing that I noticed is exactly what you spoke to a few moments ago about the community aspect. I had to throw my hand up there as first-time rider. First of all, I was so welcomed in, and I think that's something that I talk about quite a bit, gym intimidation. So much of what we fear over stepping into those new spaces is fabricated in our brains, and our brains are very good at doing that. (laughs) So good. But when you walk in and you're like, hey, I'm ready, I'm new, and just acknowledge that and kind of allow for whatever the experience is to be, I am forever amazed when I walk into fitness spaces because... Of course, a community like that would be full of positivity, kindness, and encouragement. What I didn't expect, and I've done many of these classes, was the level of community that you have in that room. And you haven't been operating that long, but I felt the support of the neighbor over here and the cheers over here. And we were all in it together. And there were a million times I was not on the beat or just like doing my own little (laughs) shimmy dance. And it's like you don't feel awkward or standing out in that moment or that space. You feel welcome to be whoever the hell you want to show up to that day. So I commend you on creating that space. What was your first ride like when you saw everyone in what you had built? It was a really surreal moment because I had such a big community at Soul Cycle. Not everyone's come back. You know, a lot of people have moved on. They've gotten Pelotons. They've moved. They've had a baby. They've gotten a promotion. Like there's there's so many um, like aspects that have made some people not return. But there have been so many people that have. And then all these beautiful new faces. And that's also so exciting that I'm like, hey, I don't know you yet. Like, let's get to know each other. And I'm really passionate about connecting with people that come to my classes. And I do make a solid effort not to stalk you, but like just to thank you and to hope that you feel um, included in what we're doing. And I really appreciate you saying that it already felt like an inclusive community because that's 100% what we're after. Like I said, it's never just about the workout. The workout's a gorgeous, amazing plus. It's the cherry on top of all the other things that I'm trying to create in there. Well, and you create a community beyond that as well. I know you're very active on your social platforms. And if I'm going to make sure that the handles are there because... What an artist on a bike. You're a real vision to watch up there as well. So I'm glad that your no turned into a yes way back when. (laughs) Well, one thing that I love to leave people with at All Things Fitness and Wellness, obviously yourself is somebody that has lived and breathed in this space and celebrates movement. And it's one thing that we're really encouraging people to get out and do in whatever capacity feels good to them. Because, again, I know we're in a time in the world that there are many mental struggles and I cannot express enough how much movement can help the mind. So what would be one of the most inspirational nuggets of wisdom that's been shared with you that has imparted something on your life that you can share with us? Oh, there's so there's so many. I think one of the phrases that resonates the most with me is it's not why me it's try me so whenever anything happens you experience that setback we really want something and we're so ready for it and we believe we're right there and we have everything it takes and it doesn't happen this can happen with you know actors who are auditioning for the biggest role of their life and they feel like yet again they don't get it or someone going after that promotion they put everything into it they don't get it or your dream career dream job dream relationship and it doesn't work out we have two choices in that moment it can turn into why me this always happens to me I'm always facing rejection it never works out or somehow we can dig deep and we can say, okay, try me. And it doesn't mean that we get exactly what we want when we want it, but it does remind us that the things that are meant for us are going to appear. It, they really are. It might not always be in the way that we expected, but just because something isn't happening for you right now doesn't mean it's not going to happen for you. Just because you don't get it exactly when you think you should, it in no way means that you will not achieve it in your life. So it's not why me, it's try me. It's something that you can take in any element or aspect of your life when you need that like pick me up or reminder and just dig in. It's, it's try me. Like, okay, sure. Try me. I'm going to go the next audition. I'm, I'm going to learn more. The next relationship, I have more knowledge, more wisdom, I, anything. It's very applicable. Daniela, that's such a fine example of why I ask that question every single time. Thank, like that 
quote, could not be more perfect for yourself because you're someone that on top of that has demonstrated resilience, perseverance, and I love a story that has faced the rejection and the no's because they inevitably become a facet of our life. And it's often the point where dreams go to die for a lot of people because it's hard to take that next step. But that's what you've done every time is one more step forward. So massive congratulations. It is a huge accomplishment. And if you're in Vancouver, dip fit, dip fit cycles, turn magenta like I did. (laughs) You've just listened to All Things Fitness and Wellness, the Celebrity Series. This episode was brought to you by Fitness World, your fitness, your way. Visit fitnessworld.ca. New episodes of the Industry Series drop every Monday and the Celebrity Series every Wednesday. Wednesday. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you never miss out on hearing from industry thought leaders and influencers. We're on a mission to help everyone live a life fit and well.